What's up? All right, I'm shooting. Right there, that little white spot. It's like an inch and a half um, spinner. It's on a piece of elastic though. It's on a, like a tube. So if, sometimes I hit the tube and it like shakes. Um, but I'm shooting, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know if I'm hitting the tube or if I'm hitting the actual spinner and you'll see a difference to it. Um, well, maybe not from here, but I'll let you guys know. <laughs> uh, I'm shooting 11 mil steel. Got my descender and I'm shooting the very last of my GZK point six two tapered from one inch to three quarter inch. That's a 25 to 19 taper. And uh, I'm drawing to face draw, so a short draw. 11 mil steel. I made a video a little while back about when I switched from 9.5 to 11 mil. And I know 0 0.62, um, the GZK 0.62 sounds like it's too light for these 11 mil steel, but they are still sending the 11 mil steel over 200 feet per second. Uh, I think it's close to about 215 or 220. Um, somewhere in that range, like 210 to 220. This set of GZK will send 9.5 millimeter steel over 250 feet per second. So it's usually like 245 to 250. Um, I said this before in the last video that I made about the GZK bands. They are unbelievably fast. They are unbelievably fast bands, but they, uh, at least in my experience, they don't have a very good lifespan. So it's the only bad part about uh, the GZK that I think uh, at all. Um, they're super fast. 11 mil steel at the spinner. I'm gonna shoot maybe 20 or 30 tar 20 or 30 shots for you. And I'll let you know whether or not they hit. I got nothing to nothing to hide here good start also the distance is like 10 meters just about 10 meters it's like uh yeah, almost exactly 10 meters. It's a miss high. Bad miss. There we go, back on track. Just high. There we go. Just high again. These descenders, the fork gap is a little bit too narrow for my where I like to anchor, and I'm anchoring pretty high. Normal, my anchor point, I like it up by my cheek, like up in here, and the shot is still going high uh, because the fork gap is a little more, more narrow than I normally like. So I, what I do is I twist my wrist like that. So I would normally have it here, and then I twist, 
And for some reason, that twist sends the shot a little lower than normal. Just missed that one. There we go. It's a good one. When it when it reacts like that, you know it's like a bullseye. It's like dead in the center of that thing. There we go. Three in a row. Let's go. Missed. Missed low on that one. Normally I miss high. And at 10 meters, I'd rather miss high. Because that means that if it's high and it's in line, at a farther distance, it would have hit whatever target I was shooting at. So maybe 11 meters or 12 meters, it would have hit it. If I had just been a little back a little bit further but it's not a bad problem to have. Boom. Another shot in. Oh, just missed that one. that one too. Same side. Slightly off to the right. Went right again. Probably my grip on the frame. Looked like a good shot. go. Oof, just missed it. Boom. That's it. Good shot. I missed it high. Missed it high again. There we go. Man, you can tell how much, especially with a large ball, you can tell how much the difference in where you're pinching the ball makes a difference. So if you pinch it there versus pinching it a little bit closer to the edge of your thumb, how much of a difference that actually makes when you're shooting. It, it, it makes it feel like if, if the ball's closer, if the ball's a little bit closer to the edge of your thumb, it makes it feel like just the slightest movement will send it. But with it under your thumb a lot more, if it's not at the edge and it's like under your thumb a lot more you you really have to like pop in order to to release the shot
Okay, I missed pretty far off that one. There we go. Ah. Alright. A few more. This video is already almost. It's actually over 10 minutes long, so I'm only going to shoot a few more shots for you. Oof. Just missed that one. Deep breath. Oof. Man, I missed a bunch of them in a row there. A couple of things that I notice when I'm shooting is my consistency is much better when I'm focused on the target. So when I am looking down the band more, I'm doing this kind of thing, like, uh, 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 and my eye moves from the band to the target, from the band to the target. That's when I end up missing a lot more. And when my eye is just focused on the target and I draw and I don't take my eye off and then I release, I'm a lot more accurate. something I noticed myself doing just now and I'm going to try to correct it. Oh my god, first shot. Boom! Gotta stare down that target. Have to stare down that target. Once you've shot, you know, 10,000 shots, you will just get that like instinctive feel for what feels right and you gotta stare your target down. Looking at your target's gonna put your arms in the right spot automatically. I missed low on that one, but it was a good shot. I felt my release. Here I start to talk about automatic and I miss. Typical. Miss again. There we go. Smacked it. shot. I think I skimmed the top of it. Boom! Smacked it again. Ugh, missed bad. Missed real bad. That was off by a couple inches. that one too. Alright, a few more shots. I'll stop at about 15 minutes, I guess. Ugh. Alright, let's refocus my brain. I got five shots here. Ugh. It's really close. I don't hate those kind of shots. I missed that one too, but it's again very close. Alright. Small corrections, small corrections. 
All right, I'll take that one. Oh, just missed high. That's okay. So, a couple of things I want to talk about. I know this is starting to go a little bit long. When you're shooting, that the pinch on the pouch needs to be consistent, as consistent as possible. Um, and depending on what you like to do, whether you like to hold the ball totally, barely hold the ball, whatever, it's not that important. You can adjust. You can adjust in a number of different ways. But what's most important is that you find something that's okay for you, that works for you a little bit, and then you just consistently stick with that, stick with that, stick with that. That's number one. Number two, focus on your target. Don't keep eyeing up and down the bands. Don't focus so much on, try, try to stare down the center of the target too. So that, that little spinner has like a red dot on it. Here, let me take you over there actually. That little spinner has a red dot on it in the middle and I can see it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Try to uh, show you here. Ugh. So that's as big as the spinner is. About an inch and a half across. And uh, yeah, you want to stare at the dead center of that target. I stare at that red dot uh, like it's a bug and I'm trying to kill it. And that's going to help you hit the object more often. So stare down your target, be consistent with your pouch release as consistent as possible. And the other big thing that has worked out what really well for me is not to make an adjustment after every single shot. Because sometimes <clears throat> you don't need an adjustment. Sometimes stuff just went just slightly wrong. So if, you, if you're missing by an inch, sometimes just the way that the pouch was or is just the way that the band was or it was just the way the tilt that maybe that you had on your slingshot a little bit don't make adjustments off of every single shot take a group and if you consistently miss consistently miss to the let's say like i had a group there where i consistently miss to the right miss to the right miss to the right okay now i gotta make an adjustment because i'm consistently going in that spot make a slight adjustment over to the left and boom you start hitting the target or maybe you just slightly missed to the left and you have to adjust somewhere in the middle. But that's an important an important part too. Don't make adjustments after every single shot. Now, once you get to the point where you're an ace and you're hitting that spinner, you know, nine times out of ten, and, okay, then maybe you understand that you need to make an adjustment after every shot. But for most people, that's just not the case. I've been shooting really consistently now for a couple of years, actually, going on over two years and I probably averaged 50 shots a day or so and sometimes when I do shoot like today I was shooting for like an hour before I started filming so there are times where I'll take I'll, I'll get a thousand shots in in a night when you get to the point and I'm not at that point yet I'm not at the point where I'm hitting 90 percent I'm probably shooting 50 percent I'll go back and look I don't even know if I'm that good yet but anyway when you are first beginning or even in the middle of your shooting journey, there's going to be a point where you know, you, you're you a good shot, where you're better than 99% of the world's population at shooting a slingshot. At that point, um, you need to just work on consistency, doing the same things over and over and over again. Work, you know, Get to your anchor point. Get to your... Um, reference point, eye down the target, and don't make adjustments after every single shot. Uh, you don't need to do that. You need to make adjustments for groupings. And uh, yeah, you'll see consistency get pretty good after you've been uh, doing those couple of things pretty consistently. Anyway, I know this video went a lot longer than I wanted it to, but thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.